Hi, I'm Alex, and this is Tank Tested. And today, we're going to see an export facility exporting fish for the aquarium trade from Manaus, Brazil, all around the world. We're also going to see one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. And we're going to see a bunch of beautiful wild-caught discus fish, the showiest and most colorful fish in the freshwater aquarium trade. But before we get into any of that, this is part two of a series that I'm doing on my trip to Brazil. A few months ago, I showed you pieberos, or fisher people, collecting fish for the aquarium trade. They do so sustainably, and if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link in the card here. Now, let's see where the fish that they collect end up. This is one of the larger exporters of aquarium fish in Manaus, the capital city of Amazonas. From above, you can see the extent of the entire facility. On the ground, you can see tubs with the family names of fishers who caught the fish being held here. These tubs are how they know who brought what and who gets paid. You might remember similar tubs in my last video, all the way upriver where the fish are collected. After the long journey downriver to Manaus, the fish are held in holding tanks to quarantine prior to export. Here you can see that the water is being continuously added to the tanks and excess water flows out of the overflow. The intent is to keep the water as clean as possible so the fish stay as healthy as they can be. The fish being exported range from small tetras to charismatic cichlids like wild angelfish. These cardinal tetras are washed out in color because the journey downriver is a strenuous one, and they were just brought in. They'll stay here as they're assessed for any underlying diseases and then fattened up for the trip overseas. Because the trip can take a few days, good exporters make sure the fish have enough energy reserves and are healthy enough to make it without food for a while. These fish represent a much smaller bio load than the big fish that are removed from the ecosystem for human consumption, which means their capture is less impactful than commercial fisheries. Yet their export still represents a real influx of cash to the local communities. And these cardinal tetras might just end up in your local fish shop. So we're almost done at the export facility, and in a second, we'll move on to discus fish. But first, I want to show you Arapaima. Now, at the back of the export facility was a big pond, and in that pond were Arapaima, one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. Take a look. Here in this cinder block pond are a group of Arapaima giant, air-breathing fish native to the Amazon basin. There are four species of arapaima, which grow to be more than eight feet in length, and weigh more than 200 pounds. Which is why many are farm-raised for the local fish markets. But these fish aren't destined for the dinner table. Instead, they're fed a diet of fish, insects, and fruit, and will live out their life in this pond. I would have loved to have gotten a few underwater shots of these monsters, but as you're about to see, I'm not sure my camera would have survived. They hunt by gulping water, sucking in anything nearby. They've also been known to jump out of the water to catch birds, lizards, and even small mammals from overhanging trees. 
The gulp approach is effective, but not always accurate, as you can see here. A big splash, but he missed his meal. And now we move on to the discus fish. I'm considering getting a couple of tank raised discus for the 150 gallon aquarium behind me. But the fish you're about to see are wild caught. And they were all caught from different streams and tributaries that flow into the Rio Negro. And when you take a look at these fish, keep in mind that each of them comes from a different stream and has a slightly different pattern. But enough stalling, let's look at discus fish. These discus fish were filmed at a different exporter who specializes in high quality discus. Each of these tanks is kept immaculately clean because discus like this are big money, selling for hundreds of dollars a pop. Each tank is home to fish from a unique stream or tributary. As a result, you'll see subtle differences in their patterning. This is thanks to the genetic variability of each population. This variability in coloration is also why captive bred discus fish have been so successfully bred into different lines that vary from iridescent blue to blood red. The fish in these tanks aren't typical, even for discus coming right out of the Rio Negro. And that's because this exporter handpicks the best discus that come to Manaus. Since these are the best of the best, it's worth keeping them quarantined for even longer to make sure they're healthy and fatty before being shipped. Each tank also has its own custom-made filtration system with easily visible filter floss, so it's immediately apparent when the filter needs to be cleaned. While I personally prefer nano fish for the home aquarium, discus are one of the few fish I'd make an exception for. They're skittish, and in the wild, like angelfish, seem to stay relatively confined to fallen logs or debris. That means a large home aquarium can come close to mimicking their natural territory. And for me, it also helps that they are fantastic parents. They're one of the few fish species that actually produce food for their young. Parent discus will encourage their fry to feed on the mucus coating on their skin, and the nutritional content of that mucus actually changes as the fry get older, evolving to match the needs of their young. They are just amazing fish, both in appearance and behavior. So with that, I want to remind you that all of these videos are part of a longer short film that I'm producing about Project Piava, and the local fishers in the Rio Negro region. If you'd like to know more about that, I will leave a link to the website, Fishing for Cardinals, in the description of this video. If you previously signed up to help translate Portuguese for me, and many, many of you did, and I'm so appreciative, look out for an email from me in the next few days. I've finally figured out a way to democratize the translation of these videos so that I can get you the people of Brazil actually speaking about their work. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time.